Hey friends, my name's Mitch, and today we're going to start the details on this cat. This is a serval cat, which is a breed of cat. I originally thought it was a tiger, but no, it's just a cat. Anyway, same family, I guess. So let's review what we did last time. We have a very nice looking animal for what, 45 minutes work? So pretty impressive for that amount of time just with soft pastels. We didn't have to use pastel pencils. I know a lot of guys will start out with pastel pencils and they'll do the whole thing in a pastel pencil. They'll sit there for 50 hours with a pastel pencil and I'm just too lazy to do that. So my method involves getting really soft pastels, going the direction of the hair, and getting that 3D look via values. And values is how dark or light it is, right? So some of the pastels are hard pastels like the Giro. By the way, I ordered a few more Giro since this one broke. I want to use that, but I'm, I'm running out of that one. Anyway, so we used a little Giro. We used some Great American. We used a little of everything. So it's looking pretty good. Now we just want to start details. Um, one thing you'll quickly find in regard to the uh, cat's uh, wider sections in there is that um, when you go in with a pencil and it's a white pencil this one's really sharp and you go in here with a white pencil it it doesn't drop a lot of dust into our carpet fiber of velour which is the paper we're using it just doesn't drop a lot of dust so you have to go back over it and you're sitting there for like 20 hours and that doesn't work very well. So what I do is just grab a Unison pastel and they have a white and we're just going to use that. It's a softer pastel, it dumps more dust and that's basically at the end of the day what you want is a bright area, a really dark area, you just want more dust basically. Okay, so I moved. So since I've been gone I put some more background on and the background really shines now it really has a lot of contrast the colors really pop um, I really like the background so far so um, in fact let me um, let me fix some of the background stuff here real quick adjust the brightness a little bit and the contrast a little bit more and that is going to be perfect right there color intensity up just a smidge okay cool all right so let's start with the eyes i mean everybody pretty much wants the first thing to do to be the eyes so uh, let's start on those i mounted this a little sideways so i got a level and i remounted it to where it's more or less level and now let's jump into the eyes um, so I have a few colors. I brought a couple of pencils, not very many, like nine whites. I'm not sure why I even brought this many whites since it's not going to do any good. So we'll put those aside for now. Yes, indeed. All right. And uh, what I want to do is move into the top of the eye first. I want to make sure this is even because what I don't want is a lopsided eye and it looks like he has a mental disorder or something. So I sort of traced that there and I traced this there. And he has some like, as the people in the forums call it, the, the angry eyes. And not a lot of people like angry eyes, which is one of the reasons I added the mouse because now he has something to be sort of, not angry at, but he has something to sort of be impatient at. And now he has a reason to look not happy, if that makes sense, because the mouse is there, and the mouse is like standing on his high legs, like, me too, I'm tall too, look at me. And the cat's like, come on, man. So that's the idea that we have for the mouse. A lot of people ask me, what I'm using to stable my hand, am I using any glassine or anything? And no, I don't touch my hand to the paper. I don't think I've ever touched my hand to the paper um, since I started doing these. I guess once you do enough of them, you pretty much, 
you don't make um, you don't like mess up lines and I guess you can do little smaller lines easier once you do enough of these things and I've done about a thousand pets about I say that now watch me completely mess this up because I didn't stabilize my hand you know it's gonna happen you're waiting for it that's why you watch the stream no comments on the stream yet And his eyes are relatively small. All right, there's gonna be a dark brown out there. Sorry, I'm not talking much. This actually takes a lot of concentration. So the eyes are, I mean, master of the obvious statement here, the eyes are the most important piece of any painting. Um, to the point of if you mess up the eye and you can't fix it, you're pretty much starting over. Which is bad, obviously, especially on a big painting like that. But they are just super, super critical. It's the first place everybody's eyes are going to go, especially if the animal's looking at you. Um, my teacher, Johannes Floathouse, has a bunch of interesting theories about animals. And he said, a, an animal looking at you is okay if it's not an intimidating animal that will eat you. And then I went off and painted that lion that's looking bright at you. So, I don't know. I wanted the intimidation factor to be there. If I could get your attention. And the interesting part about this painting is, I have a guy, a um, friend of mine, he hates art, like passionately. And I'll show him all my stuff just to irritate him. And he usually just says that looks terrible. But on this one, he didn't say anything. And then he wanted to see it again. So I thought that meant that he loved it. That's my interpretation of his reaction, is that he really liked this one. Because he wanted to see it again, which is... I don't think I've ever remembered him asking that question before. Can I see it again? Alright. So that... I'm going to scoot back some. How does that look size-wise? We're going to measure it out size-wise. You're talking there to there there okay that looks good so come over here I want to get an outline that comes down and then it loops over and then comes around here now I want to make sure the eyes are the same size his, his left eye, or right if you're looking at it, is slightly smaller and lower, so that is, that's, that's right. What's not right is the corner here as it comes through. that okay all right and now he has like a a greenish tint to it and again I got this from wildlife reference photos and I like them because it's only two dollars I did at one time buy two pictures of animals from a stock photo site And it was photos that I could not get anywhere else. And I paid 70 bucks. But these were photos that did not exist 
anywhere else. And they were perfect for what I needed them for at the time. But we're not pressing very hard. We are lightly, lightly pressing. And somebody asked yesterday what the paper is. It's velour. And velour is a thin paper like carpet. And what we do is we just mount it on here. And I have eight pieces of tape because this is a large piece. Normally, I would cut this in half and have and make half that my picture. But this is a showpiece that I'm going to sort of take around to shows or um, throw in a competition or something like that. So um, we're going to spend quite a bit of time because of that on these. So I like the green in the eyes. It picks up from the green in the background. And I did add some browns amongst the background. We're going to do a lot of work on the background, probably at least two hours with the background itself. And I'll show you how to make it look decent. We'll break out different brands of pastels and put them on and all sorts of stuff. So uh, at this point, I have my 175, which is the dark, dark brown, but I don't want that one. I want an actual dark brown because he has, I don't know what that is, like little marks that are coming up through there. Like that. And then you come over here. Little marks that are there as well. It's more of a turquoise. Pardon me while I get a turquoise. Some type. That is green. It's like a purple. Yeah, that's like a really dark purple, and I think that's actually going to do us right. It's going to make it right, man. Okay, I like that. that. I'm going to come back in with Le Black. Hit and come down. Come down through there. through here with that area there and then up top we have a dark area I'm actually doing both eyes today which is unusual normally I do one eye and move on to something else and everybody gets upset they're like when are you gonna do the other eye you only did one I can't even see his pupils can I We got a big, big highlight right above that. All right, then I want the dark brown again. Sort of just touches right there. All right. And then we have a lighter brown inside the eye. And the lighter brown just sort of comes out. Like that. 
and then once it gets deeper into the eye, it's darker. And here's where we use our 175. And the pupil sort of comes out a little bit in a fade. All right, so I like that. And then we have like lines. that and then make the purple a little more pronounced at the bottom here. Alright, and we have a lot of little details in through there. So the first detail is like this darker brown but it's desaturated that's coming underneath the eye here. And that comes around right here. It's actually a little too saturated, but we'll add some black in it to desaturate it. All right, so it looks pretty good. The thumbnail looks weird because we're not finished with the whole eye area. But uh, then we have like a darker brown that's coming above the eye, like right there. Like that, and then that darker brown comes around here. And then you have this area that comes outside here. All right, so that looks good. And then we have the highlight. So we're gonna do the highlight with this which is, let's see if this is gonna work out. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. So all this is, it's dumping acrylic paint. good. I like it because it's really really white and we do have our plastic glass metal paper pencil and I need that razor sharp. All right. I need a pencil sharpener. That's not that one. And we're gonna have a little thing here And then we have a little mark that comes inside the eye there. And then we have a mark outside here. Like that. And then we have a mark in the middle of the brown like this. Like that. That looks really nice. I like it. I like it a lot. What is all this activity going on? Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Thumbnail. That looks beautiful in the thumbnail. I hope it looks all right in re real life, which I think it does. Okay, I have that, and I want to highlight this a little more. Like that. Okay, cool. That looks nice and healthily good. Her, 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 her. All right, so for the other eye, that's come up a little bit more, and it's not going to work out the way it is now. So what do I need to do to fix this disaster of this eye here? I need to come up and then across, and then it comes down, and then 
The problem is it's not dark enough right here. So we've got the line that goes across through there. And then we have the dark area inside. And we have a dark brown inside of the eye. But it's not all dark brown. It's got a little bit of that purple. All right, so we're going to sneak this purple right in here. Just give it a little hint. Don't want to slap the user in the face on this stuff. Just a little hint. How long we got? Wow, we've been going for 20 minutes. Because I started blabbing at the beginning of this thing. That's part everybody skips over probably. Like, why is he talking? He should be painting. Um, all right. That's funny. I actually was looking forward to doing a bigger painting so I could put more detail in the eyes. And I picked the one painting that has the smallest eyes humanly possible. All right. That looks good. All right. Now we need to put in the pupil, which you can make it the same as the other one. I can't even see the pupil. It's right there. All right, I'm gonna scooch back. Look at that, look at that. Compare. That actually looks all right. I just keep getting the feeling it's too small. I'm just gonna widen it just a bit. Like not obnoxiously so. Just wanna raise the height a little bit. Something in my eye is just saying it's not big enough. But that one little bitty bitty mark I think fixed it. All right, so now we put our brown underneath here. What can brown do for you? You can go underneath the eye and make this cat look beautiful. So now I have, all right, let's get a razor sharp pencil. We have a mark here. That's not precisely where it goes, but okay. And then we have little lines right across through here. All right, that looks good. And then we have a highlight up in here. Pretty good. All right, so scooting back, I am fairly pleased with that. It's a little lopsided, but in the reference photo, it looks lopsided as well. Let me compare thumbnails. I'm sorry, I'm OCD, guys. Bear with me. Um, that is pretty close. I don't think it's exact, but I think it's close enough. Okay. All right. Thumbs up. We get the eyes done. Now I can put up some of these toys and we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming of doing the body and stuff. All right. So at this point, what do I want to do? I want to do the rest of the face. Doze the fast. So I don't need that purple anymore. Put it up. All right, look at our time. We have five minutes until the 30 minute mark. So I want to get a light brown here. And I sort of already played with it and put a little too much yellow on it, as you can see. 
but I do have like this brown area right here. And let me gauge the nose and compare that because that looks lopsided. The nose is lopsided. It needs to come up about 10%. So we'll get our black and we'll bring the nose a little bit up. It's not that far away. All right, that looks good. Then we have our shiny nose part of the nose we're gonna get so this is 199 this is pit pastel pencil I love pit pastel pencil I do have a place in my heart for a carbothello but I'm just saying that I really really love pit pastel so the nose does have a lopsided portion a little area that comes up a little higher here and then as we go over here, that goes there, and then that goes up across through there. And then we have a section right there that is similar to this section over here as well. Okay, so I like that. And we have this section there. It's a little too much. It's a bit much. So we do have 10,000 Carvathello Whites that we have prepared for just such an emergency. So it's too wide. There's a section that comes out and then cuts off the stripe and then it comes up. Right in through there. All right, it's a bit too much, but whatever. It still looks pretty good. All right, um, so what I want to do now is, so I have the brown section at the bottom. I want to enhance that a little bit with some Caran d'Ache. This is Caran d'Ache 745. It's a, it's a flesh color, like a darker skin flesh color. What you don't want to do is make this cat all one brown color and spooge the brown all over the place with one color. You want to have you want to have at least five browns, like minimum five browns, with pastel pencils. And pastel pencils are so cheap, it's like whatever. So, and that's going to give you the variety that you need to make this look really good. Because like this is almost an orangish brown, and although there's no orangish brown actually in the picture, this just gives a little more of the oomph that you want when putting this down. And see, then I'll come back with a darker brown and hit just a little bit. And again, this is only dust, guys. Dust in the wind. All this is is dust in the wind. Good, and now we come up, and the yellow is actually going to do us good. So let me make sure I have a few minutes left on the thing. So let me show you a technique to get the microscopic little hairs on the cat's nose area. So what this is, we're getting a pastel pencil. And normally with a pastel pencil, you're just gonna drag it down and make your marks, right? But what we wanna do, so instead of dragging it down, making your marks, you get it 45 degree angle. You're gonna come here and you're just gonna lightly press it with a sharp tip. And that's going to give you these little marks like this that go up and you have this nice subtle mark and it's a small mark too because your pastel pencil is sharp make sure it's sharp and as you get farther up the nose you push a little longer and make little longer hairs 
So as we're coming up, we have this nice, this nice flow coming through here. That's really dark. So look at that. That looks really nice. How's this look on camera? That looks really nice. You have this very, very, very subtle mark. comes up across through there. So we're doing the same thing with this here, but we're doing it in order to make a line. Like that. And then that line, we're using 175. This is the super dark brown, and it's listed as brown. That's the one thing I hate about pastel pencils and pastels in general. When you go online and you look at a color, it looks exactly like you want. You're like, that's exactly the color I need. So you order it and it comes in and it's completely different. And you're like, seriously? What the heck just happened with this? All right, so now we're doing our technique of we just push it a little bit with this dark brown. We're going to make these smaller hairs here. Like that. And this is coming in the same here. We have this area right above the eye. And I know a lot of people reviewed Velour and they hated it. Because they're like, you can't make long lines, which I've disproven. And the second thing they say is you can't make little hairs, which I've also disproven. So I'm telling you guys, velour, it's like the ultimate paper, man. You can get little lines, you can get little hints, you can get long hairs and whiskers. I mean, look at these little bitty lines I'm making with this. And this is velour, man. Velour and a Carbothello pencil. Instead of going here and doing that, you just get yourself a nice sharp edge coming up. So this is like a brown, but it's like a darker, dark brown. And that looks pretty good, actually. Get some highlight there. And then as we come up, I'm gonna make some brown marks, some hairs like here. that and we come up we got some hairs come up there so if you see any reviews on velour and they talk about just how damn terrible it is please send them to my channel and go but 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 look at this okay that comes through there looks nice um, I still think, I still think that looks real good. Okay, now let's come in with a white, and let's get, this is a tan, but I want to make it white, this area right here, and I don't want to just color it in, I want to get this nice dust coming up through there. All about the details. It looks really good. Well, until I just did that, and then it looks really bad. Other than that, it looks really good. I'll teach you a trick too. You don't have to spend a lot of time sharpening your pencils. When you have a pastel pencil, what you can do is why does that look so weird? What you can do is just sharpen it enough to where you have a little bit of a tip and then turn it on its edge and you'll get a little extra sharpness from that. That looks good. Pretty good. 
All right, I'm going to regret this. I guarantee it. Only on with the glove. All right, we're getting unison white. Oh, this is going to go really bad. Let me get a really sharp corner. That's not a sharp corner. All right. That's what I wanted. That looks good. Well, we have it. So this is Unison White. And the reason I switched to this is because a pastel pencil dumps not a lot of dust due to the nature of it being a pastel pencil. It's a hard pastel and it doesn't do a full dust dump. But this Unison does. A better job at that and you don't want to spooge over the whole area with white you just want to get this bright bright white right there just a bright bright white and it doesn't encompass the whole whiskery area it just does a little bit and we're going to use this as well I realize that's uneven, but I don't care. We're going to fix that in a minute. It does this as well when you come down here. So let's come down here to the leg. You'll notice there's a white area right underneath here. And it's really, really bright white. So what you do is you turn this on its side. And you just want to make a little highlight with that. And you don't want to cover the whole thing in white. You just want to get a little bit. So like right here, you turn it to where you're going to get a fur direction. And you just want to get that white. And don't bring it out like past like there. And there, there are little bitty hairs that come out like that, but we're not going to do that with this. Now, if our painting was bigger, we could but our painting is not that big. So now you skip a section because if you look at the reference photo right here, he has a little darker area in between the two white hairs. So you wanna, you wanna maintain that. Just get your white here. And then as you're coming up across through here, just get a little more white. And then you're coming through here and a little more white. So that just gives you this bright white, and that's all you really want, man. You just want that bright white. Same when you come over through here, you got like a little bright white. And some artists that are pastelists, what they'll do is they'll get a really, really large picture, and then they'll use this for all the hairs. Uh, they'll just break it into thirds, break it into halves, etc., and they'll use it for all the hairs because your picture's so large, you can get away with it. But this picture's not big enough for me to get away with it, I don't think. Uh, either that or my skill level is below doing that. All right. All right, so we just have the feel of bright white hairs right there, right? And then we can come down across through here, and I think this is gonna be off camera, I apologize. But just imagine, if you would, a world where I'm doing the exact same thing I just showed you. All right, and then down through here. Got the same sort of thing. Okay, so now you have the whites like that. And then what you do is you come in with your pencil your colored pencil and you just make little bitty hairs like fluffing out but I don't want to do that right now because I want to make this darker around here and that's going to compete or contrast well with the hairs coming out so we'll hang on to that in just one moment all right and go back to our pencils off that leg glove okay what am I doing 
I finished the eyes. I finished the nice little hair around the eyes. I put in a little yellow here just to give it something to catch your eye. No pun intended. And up here we have this reddish like this. There's not a lot of this reddish brown, but it's there. If you look at the reference. Again, we're just making little hairs. We don't want to like, cover the whole freaking area with this stuff. All right, that looks good. It comes up through there. I like that. All right. Um, and in addition to that, you have these light tan, and I have this. I'm not sure how light tan that's going to suffice. That looks all right. Need some darker stuff in there, but we'll get that in just a second. So you see, I'm making these little hairs as they come up through there, and then we want some of this light tan flesh color right in through here. Some of the hairs that are coming across there. All right, and that is predominantly white, so I don't really want to mess with it too much, but I also want to give it something to contrast with. And then over here, we go completely desaturated, man. So, I mean, hey, I can do desaturated, I think. Can you do desaturated? I think so. What is this? All right, so here's an example of a not so sharp pencil. So this is a dark brown, it's not sharp, but if you look on the edge, the very edge of the pencil has some sharper areas. So what you do is you turn it so that that edge is facing out and then you can make smaller hairs like that. Like that, see? That's not even sharp, but I made extremely small hairs just by turning it to get to the sharp corner. So you don't need an exact sharp match all the time you just turn it and get your sharp corner out of there all right, so I have some coming up through there so I'm making these small little hairs and it's not even sharpened so I know a lot of people ask you how do you sharpen your pencils um, with a craft knife and the other proper answer is I don't. I rarely will go and make a super sharp pencil. I made one today just because, but for the most part, I'll just keep turning it till I get to the sharp corner. And just make my little lines up here. that and then as you come up got little hairs there so you're probably thinking this pencil needs to be really sharp to make these little hairs like that but no it's dull as crap all right I like that and again we're gonna hold off on a lot of the outer hairs until we get the background in place and finished. Right now it looks pretty good, but since that occupies like 90% of the picture, I want to make sure that it looks perfect. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that. We need a few more dark browns across through there. All right, now we come in with our really, really dark 175, which is this super dark brown, almost to be black. 
and then I did sharpen this one. What I want to do, just come in and make these little highlight. ready sections. When I say highlight ready, I mean they are going to, I'm going to come in with a lighter pencil and make some lighter sections, but I need a base to do that because you can't really make lighter sections on top of lighter sections. So what I do is come in with the dark first. And I think a lot of people say work light to dark, but I kind of do it both ways. What I'll do is I'll do that, and then I'll come in with these lighter, lighter tans, or whites, and then just make little marks like that. And then we're going to come in with colored pencil, of course. You know me and the colored pencil. Come in with that, and then make these little sections there. All right. Okay, that looks good. And then I want some hair action here because we have like this little section of hair that comes across through there. And then in between those two sections, he has some really dark brown area right here. And normally we would be finishing up a pet right about now, but this again is going to be a showpiece. So this is probably going to take six hours minimum. because of the size. So the good news is you get to see my OCD in full unfettered form. All right, this is my saturated brown. And then we're gonna come up with this and we're gonna make our little hairs across through here. Again, we're going to come in here with colored pencil and make some details and such, but for today, I just want to get a nice start. I don't have a tan color with the color that I want, and I'm not pleased with coming in with this white like this. So we're going to do colored pencil, we're going to do this tan color and come through here with that. Um, so in case you're wondering where are the tan hairs that you see in the reference photo, um, we're just not gonna be able to do that without colored pencil. I looked through all of my sheets and I do have tans such as the C690. That's not the tan that I want, that's too saturated. I do have the Derwent tan, again, too saturated. This is more of a, a butterscotch type tan and I just don't have it. So we're gonna resort to colored pencil. All right, let's talk about hairs. When you're doing hairs, you'll notice very strongly in the picture, you have a hair coming across like that, and then you have another one that comes the other direction. So you have this sort of a mix and match of hairs, one going down, one coming up. And I wanna kinda of do that as we come through here. Some are longer, some are shorter. And then right here we have this white. I have white. So you see you just kind of put the curls in the hairs as they come across. And this is our saturated brown, which is gonna bite us in the rear end. Right about here, because that is solid desaturated, man. So we're just gonna lightly touch it. Again, making this hair pattern. So in case you missed my hair tutorial and the other videos, I can go over that real quick because that, that has got to be my number one question after how do you sharpen your pencils. 
So here's how you make hairs. You use a different paper. We need a different piece of paper. So what you do, you want a different style of hair. You don't want the same hair over and over and over and over and over. So in other words, you're gonna have you're gonna have a hair coming through like that, and then you're gonna have another one coming through like that. You're gonna have one like this, and you're gonna have a little clump of hair here. So again, like that, through that, across like that, and a shorter one, longer ones, etc. Then you have clumps, a clump there. So that's how you do hair, essentially. So. Um, what you don't want to do is make it the same everywhere because that is going to be upsetting to the user. They're not going to like that a lot. So it's important to have a lot of variation on this. Okay, this is kind of sharp, but not really. So we have some hairs coming out. I don't want a lot. Again, we need to get the background settled before we come in here and get serious about the outermost hairs on his face. So for now, we'll just have a little bit, like, like a dis, like a dis. Again, we don't want a lot of saturation here because that is a very desaturated area. Uh, especially as you start coming down through here, we have a lot of desaturated browns. Okay, cool. So I like the face, it looks nice, but, but, the desaturated is going to kill us, man. So I have this. Let's see how this is going to look. This is my lighter tan flesh color. And I do sort of like that a little bit for here. Just put it in as a base. So I just want this as like an ace of base. Okay, and then coming in with our darker, darker, darker brown, which I guess we can use the 175 and just nail these hairs here. one a little bit of your ace of base here and we're making a pattern which is bad. And we're just going to sort of tickle the outside of the face here, but again, we're not going to go all the way outside because we need to establish our background first. But, but, man, I am pretty happy with this. Pretty happy, very happy with this. And if I move across to there, and make some uh, curls into here. All right, then we're gonna turn it and start making our smaller hairs. Through here. Because we have like a darker area right along through here. And over here, we have a little bit of a darker area there. down 
another one right there. And I'm pressing really light. What you don't want is just this obscenely dark area there for no reason. Um, cool. So now we have like a desaturated brown across through there. And then as you come down, that comes out a little bit more, like right around there. And then it comes down and has like a little splotch area right there. Right there. Splotch area right there. Okay, that looks good. And let's get this splotchy area here. It's right there. There. All right, cool. That looks great. And then in the middle, he's got like a flesh colored, it's a lighter flesh color though. And we're gonna get ourselves in trouble here by using a colored pencil of flesh color. Where are you, Mr. Colored Pencil? What is that? That, ooh, no, well, I don't know. Hang on. Get all the pastel dust off the end of it. Let's see if we can get away with this. Is that going to be what we want? No. Oh, colored pencils. Where are you? Where I need you. So that's more of a yellow. That's really going to burn us. Um, I've got this flesh colored one here. Oh, God, no. That no. Oh, where are you, colored pencil? That. Ooh, I think that'll do it. through there. All right, look at the thumbnail. Oh, that looks good. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look amazing, but looks all right. Um, okay, cool. I like it. It needs to be toned down a bit, but whatever. Um, what I want to do now, though, is come back through with the magic pencil and I want to get a little highlight here. All right, I'm happy with that. So now as we come out, we have a lighter tan. What I want to do is see how bad this is going to look. That's really yellow. I sort of like it just for like this one area right here though. Because that's a little yellow. And as we come down, we start in with the grays. So we're going to grab a sort of gray color and just start coming in through here. We got a couple of grays because we didn't have enough pencils already. We got a couple of grays here. And I just want to start process of just going through here and getting some base in because this is going to be a darker white but in order to get away with the darker white we need some gray in here and you want to press fairly light and get the sort of the hair pattern and again this is white and you do have white all right last final 30 minutes we hardly got anything done isn't that exciting so we just came across with this gray right here and now we're coming out and putting smaller hairs across through there we just want white in between the gray and in order to offset that a little bit so that's how you do sort of a darker white area like in through there. 
And now we need our darker color, obviously, in between the two. So we need to place this correctly. And what you don't want to do is draw a line. I think that's what a lot of people do is draw a line. And instead of drawing a line, you just want to come through here. And make little hairs in that direction, if that makes sense. So you don't have a line, you just have little hairs, and some are longer than the others. Coming across through there. Then you have the mouth, and then out of the mouth you have another section that comes down. And then it comes down through here, and then sort of flips over into there, and again we're pressing really light. Okay. All right, let's look at the thumbnail. That looks all right. And now we have a red section underneath here. So we have a darker area that's extending down from the nose, which needs to be enhanced a bit. sort of rough guessing this from the picture. If I mess this up, I'm sorry, man. Okay, so that looks good. The whole thing seems a little lopsided, but that's because I purposely made this a little too lopsided in order to get what I wanted out of this. And underneath there is a red. So I have a dark red that I really enjoy using and that's my colored pencil. And we're gonna grab that and just sort of come in through here. Of course now I can't find it. Imagine a dark red colored pencil. Really? Where is it? No, I'm filming. Come on, man. You should be readily available, no pun intended. Yeah. All right, that's a dark, that's a darkish red slash brown. We really, really want to be careful with this. And I just want, again, you're not going to color in the area. What you're going to do is make hairs and your hairs are going to color in the area. What you don't want to do is just go straight across because that's not how it looks in the reference. So you're going to press down not hard but medium to get the mouth in and then you're going to go across back across your black area there with this color and just a smidge here not a lot. So, when I look at the reference, that looks really nice. Congratulations, you have spent an amazing amount of hours on eyes, nose, and a mouth. But, you have to admit, that's where everybody's going to look. So, sorry if I used an hour and a half on the eyes, nose, and the mouth, but you have to admit, that's where all of you are going to look the minute you see this painting drawing, whatever you call it. We're going to come in through here with some darks, darker grays, and offset this white a little bit through there. And then we're going to have dark gray sort of dots in between here. It's a little too harsh, but whatever. And then dark gray dots across through here, and across through there. And as you get farther down, it gets darker. And then I want to come in with my super pencil. And I want to make little hairs in the dark gray. Like this.
Okay, so I'm happy with that. And so far so good, definitely. So let's get our dark browns and let's come in underneath the chin. And what I want to do for that, it's an interesting area. It's dark, but it's not like really, really, really dark. So it's an interesting area. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to come in here with multiple different colors and just sort of hit it right along through here. And as per my more theory, we're gonna give it a little bit more darkness than it needs. And then we're gonna come over it with a tan colored pencil because that's our main issue right now is we just don't have that particular color. And again, this is not sharp at all and yet I can get some fairly nice lines through here. Not like surgical precision or anything, but. All right, so I'm happy with that. And now I wanna come in with my super, super dark 175. And you just want to get some separation between this white area up there, the white whiskers, and then the chin that's coming underneath. Like you don't want this to be just pure black, but you want it to be dark enough to where you have a separation. And that's the main point here. Long as there is a separation, then you're good. Okay, as long as there's a separation, you're good. And what you can do is get this black dark and come through here because we're coming back with the tan colored pencil, right? So you can get like a pretty dark areas underneath here and get away with it. Again, what the heck is that noise? And then the head comes out a little more here. like a darker area right along there all right and then let's come in with the lighter areas amongst that like right here it's what we want we just want our just want our wider areas right there and again this is a hard pencil Pastel pencils are hard pencils, unfortunately. They don't dump a lot of dust. And that's sort of what we need right here in certain sections. So I'm just gonna try to press a little harder. It's not helping. Okay, try a different one. I've got like nine of these. with some of that. that and we can come up across through here and again our main thing is going to be colored pencil here but I do want just a little bit and next time we will start with the body
going to come back over across here and make a little stabbing lines with this. Little stabbing lines gives us a super, super small hairs. Okay, cool. How's that look? Looks really nice. Um, all right. So, how much time we have left? Plenty. So now let's come and start doing some body work. What I want to do is get my 175, and let's just start coming along through here and giving a hint of these stripes. So I did get a question from Joan. Joan is one of my very frequent watchers. She asked, how do you do stripes? And how you do stripes is in the bigger stripes, you want to cover it with really dark areas and leave light gray blotches. So don't want all of it completely dark. You want light gray blotches. And then from the stripe, you're going to come in with a pencil and just make a little hairs coming out. That's a big stripe, okay? A little stripe, you want to do it with a pastel pencil and only a pastel pencil. And you want to make it by making hairs. You don't want to you don't want to make a stripe. You want to put the hairs there that constitute the stripe. Was the stripe one of the gremlins? Or was that stipe? May have been stipe. I've not watched that in forever. So you see that? So there's your stripe, or stipe. You just make your little hairs, and you obviously want to make sure they go in the direction of the actual hairs and the stripe. So that's going to help you a lot. Um, and so that's basically it. That's, that's, you're not really making a stripe. You're making a series of hair that constitute the stripe. Does that make sense? So as you come across through here, you have this area right there, and that has a stripe that sort of comes out a little bit there. And then it comes through here, and then you have a darker section. And you're pressing light, and then you're pressing hard. You don't want to press hard the whole way, so you want a nice, uh, you want a nice variation. And, and like I'm pressing light there, and I'm pressing hard here. You don't want to just mash down hard the whole time. It's going to look like a third grader did it, and that's unfortunate, but... So you just want to press light some places, and then press harder other places. That's going to give you a nice variation. Of the stripe. So here, like we have a stripe that goes here, I'm pressing fairly hard, and as you come up, you got stripes that come up, across through there, and then here you have a stripe, and you just want to tickle the canvas here, like that, and then you have a stripe here. Then you have hairs that sort of are stripes. Back through there. Like that. All right, that looks pretty good. So now, so we made these stripes here. I'm gonna press a little harder on some of these. Now we're gonna come through and give definition to these stripes. So again, we're going the direction of the hair. We're not making a single line. We're making these a little in, a little out lines, a little hint of line here. 
Then down here we have like a harder press because this is a darker stripe. And again, all we're doing is making hairs and making it a glob of stripe, right? Like that. Like that, and then have stripes across through there. All right, so there's your stripes. That looks really nice. And then in between those stripes, you want to have your light tan. And again, we're doing that with colored pencil, but I do want a nice base. Just get an ace of base through here of this brown. And that's gonna give something the tan to sit on. So this is a really, really saturated brownish, almost a olive brown. So again, we're just making this cross through there, making these little lines. And this is not sharp at all, but what I'm doing is I'm finding the edge that's, that's sort of sharp and coming across through there and making little lines with it. And again, you go in different directions with the hair and up across and like that. As it comes through, and now we have our hairs that go across through there. And we'll move down a little bit here. And as we come down, this is getting lighter. And really, this yellowish brown is really doing us good here. We could also come in with our flesh color. And just let that flesh color come in through there and be the base for our colored pencil. getting really light over here it's really desaturated on this side and we'll put in our base stuff here so again we have another stripe there I'm gonna press fairly hard again we're coming over this with colored pencil guys so you're talking not a lot of the stripe will survive because in the in the photo there's not a lot of stripe left so we're just just put it in here fairly dark and since this is pastel the color pencil will just glide right over it which is what we want because we want just a little bit of a stripe here and again I press a little harder a stripe there and then we come across and have a stripe across through here and then like that and then over here you have sort of a stripe and over here you have something I don't know what it is um, and then as we come down next to here, we have a darker stripe. Press it fairly hard. And that's going to blend into that one. And then down here, we have this really odd thing where it's a stripe, but the hairs start going all these different directions. So let's, since we're not going to do the colored pencil today, let's move this up some. Sorry for the weird noise inside of my Zoom in H2. What time we got left? We're only 19 minutes in. We got a good 10 minutes. All right. Let's start putting in some whites, guys. So again, we're going to get our Unison Pencil. And hit refresh. Is there something wrong in my browser? Scroll down. Oh, hey, Lene and Sherry, how are you doing? My browser is not refreshing today. All right, so now we're going to do the whites, guys. Thank you guys for joining. I do appreciate you guys coming and joining me. I like streaming because there's actually people here hanging out. It's cool. So then uh, here's our white. And again, we're using this because it dumps dust. It's a dust dumper. It's a dust dumper. Dust dumper. Uh, we got that. And we have some... White's coming down in through here. I don't want to get too much of this because we're going to do this with colored pencil. 
but I do want it to look nice for the thumbnail for the thumbnail today when I'm done because I like it to look nice when I'm done so the problem we have here is we have the hairs going this direction, that direction, this direction, that direction, et cetera, and that does not do us good. to it. Did I accidentally discover a new technique? Sherry, I think I just discovered a new technique. I could be excited about this. whites in that looks all right and that looks good too got our darks I like that and we have this brown over here and it's not quite saturated let me put up my pencils wow you hear that noise all right, Sherry, we're wandering into territory unknown. What is that? 107. That is, ooh, that's exactly what I want. We're wandering into territories unknown with the Juro 107. I'm not French, so I'm probably actually butchering the name of this. Maybe it's Geralt. Maybe it's Giro. Either way, I seriously doubt that I'm doing this proper like. So I just want some hairs there. And I do want some stripes in this before we leave today. I'm gonna to put in the stripes. So I have this darker area through there. Like that. And how is this gonna look there? It's gonna look absolutely terrible. Let's play with what? What do we wanna play with? I wanna play with the, I know I like the black color of that and the white I have been curious all day about this white and the black so first off let's get the black I know what that's going to do that's going to do us good uh, for this right there so this is a stripe but it's out of focus so what I want to do instead of making sharp lines I want to get this and barely touch it to the paper. So that's going to be an out of focus stripe. And that's sort of brown too. So we can get some brown. And again, I ordered a few more of these because my black is running out and my white is almost completely out. I don't want to do too much right through here, but I do want to get the values right. Because again, we're coming back across through there. And then I do want to get this darker area in here. Cool. 
cool. And that extends into there. And all right, so that looks pretty good. And then I have some here. And I think my stream is going to crap out. All right, through there, then we have some through here. So again, these are out of focus stripes. Uh, I like that. And then I also wanted to play with a white. This is 359, which is a light blue. But what I wanted to do with this 359, I just wanted to mess around with this thing. So. Because it's blue, it has this cool white color. And what I wanted to do is ruin my painting, apparently. What I wanted to do is use the other end that's not dirty. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. So what I wanted to do is come in across through here and just get this hint of this light blue. Just this hint. It's like your eye sees it, but it's not really sure how to handle it. Because it's like, wait a minute, is it blue? And so your eye just sort of takes over and gets confused with it. Alright, so you don't want it everywhere, but you do want it just here and there. Uh, just at the tops, like right there. And then we can come up here, put just a smidge right there. Like that. Oh, it's a lot of work today. Turned out well. I'm fairly pleased with how this looks. I'm looking at the thumbnail and it looks real, like a real cat. So, uh, I'm done.